Good morning, lovely people. Marie Alessi here. We are going to kick off this week with a topic that I believe is really relevant to everyone in this group here. And um, as you know, I'm also sharing these videos outside of this group. So I truly believe in whoever needs to hear this message right now will be able to tune in stuck emotions hands up who has been dealing with that in any way shape or form ever during your life i believe that everybody is putting their hand up in any way because um, we have all been there at some stage where we feel that we are stuck in an emotion and we can't move it so the word itself the very first time i heard that ages ago i was really quite blown away by the simplicity of it you know what is emotion it's energy in motion and the emphasis is on the motion it needs to move it's in the world in the word itself we need to move emotions rather than letting emotions move us and i'm talking about rather in a negative way because if they're beautiful emotions, let them move you. Let them take you away. You know, it's just really beautiful to allow that in. I want you to find the beauty in allowing the rather heavy emotions in. And I'm sharing with you the very simple way that I deal with emotions. It's that circle of see them, acknowledge them, heal them. If we don't see them, we can't acknowledge them. And if we can't acknowledge them, we, sh we certainly can't heal them. And I use it in every single one of my journeys and healing journeys and programs and anything that I do or teach. See them, acknowledge them, heal them. I used that picture to promote the event today where this woman is stuck in an elevator. It's really interesting because I thought, how can I best describe that in a visual when you are stuck? And I found this picture of the woman stuck in an elevator and I thought this is such a perfect visual for what we are talking about here because what do you do when you get stuck in an elevator? Because it's such a perfect example because some people just go through the logical motions. They press the help button. They tell people what's going on. They wait for help to come in and get freed. That's the usual that happens. Sometimes it's as easy as putting, pushing the up or down button and the elevator starts again. Sometimes people start to panic. What happens when you're sitting in the elevator and you panic? It just worsens your situation. It doesn't do anything. It does not make the elevator move not up, not down, and it certainly doesn't let it crash. So I want you to think about that for a second. What happens when you panic? You are in a confined space and for some that is a trigger. For some that is a trigger of feeling helpless, of panicking in terms of I don't know how to get out of this. I am scared of falling, in the worst case scenario, even dying. And let's face it, we're, we're dealing with really heavy emotions in this group. And of course, they can cause fears. They do cause fears. They are causing fears of the future. What happens next? What do I do with that if I don't receive help? What happens if I get stuck in here, in this fear, and I can't get out? So one of my favorite examples, and I'm going to share that here again, is a situation that happened approximately nine months after Rob passed. It was a situation where I came back from traveling the world with my boys and they were going back to school. And until that point, I had literally everything prepared. Everything was thought through. I had a plan for everything. For every single step of the way, I was prepared to create the happiest life possible for my boys. I had it prepared until the day they were going back to school. 
even to the point where I knew that from that day onwards, they would sleep in their own beds again. Because for the first nine months, we literally shared a bed or a room ongoing. First to keep us safe, then because we were traveling, and to keep us safe. There were always reasons, but we literally spent each night in either the same bed or the same room for nine months. So when we came back and the boys went off to school, I found myself in our living room right above where I'm sitting now on the floor. And I felt this huge emptiness. I felt this huge hole opening up. And I share that in one of my healing journeys. I call it the hole and the hill experience because to me it felt like there was this big hole opening up to my right and there was this danger of me falling into it, falling deeply. I had nothing prepared for this. Everything was prepared for us, for them. But then all of a sudden they went back to school and I was sitting there and thought, and now? What about me? What, what am I doing now? I had nothing left to do. All my plans were ticked off. All my to-do list was ticked off. And I felt this huge hole opening up really threatening me. It felt like if I was to fall in there, I am not certain whether I would make it back out. And then I imagined to my left this little hill of happiness that I had created the last nine months. And it took me a lot to create that. But the more I did it, the easier it became and the more beautiful the experiences were. And I knew that we needed that. We needed that happiness to go on in life. I wanted that for the boys, for me. And I knew that Rob would be so proud of me to create that. So I was sitting literally in the middle and I was so aware of this hole opening up to my right and this little hill to my left. And I knew that I didn't want to fall in there because I honestly feared that I might not find my way back out. And I knew that I had nothing left to climb that little hill and get a better view from up there, from all the happiness that I had created. So in that very moment, I made a decision that I was not aware of at the time. It became quite clear to me a few days after. But what happened was somehow my subconscious decided to go into observation mode. And that has become my go-to tool when I feel that emotions are getting too heavy, that emotions are keeping me stuck somewhere. And I allow myself to go into observation mode to actually look at what is happening in my life right now, in my emotions, what is my emotional state doing to me and am I allowing that I literally go into observation mode what am I allowing into my life am I okay with that am I happy with that I don't go into judgment I literally just observe and that has become such an amazing tool for me that I share everywhere because it keeps you out of trouble it keeps you out of judgment it keeps you out of the whole. It keeps you in the middle when you don't have enough strength left to climb up to that hill of happiness. I don't want you to slide into that hole of unhappiness, if that makes sense. So what do we do when we feel we are stuck in emotions? Observe. That's the very first step. Go into observation mode to see what is the emotion that we're actually dealing with. What can I do about it? This is where you then go into solution mode. And very often when we don't feel that we can see a solution, I ask people to nudge themselves out of their own way and slip into their best friend's perspective. It's another tool I'm teaching in one of my healing journeys. Go into your best friend's perspective. When you don't know what you could do for yourself, but all of a sudden you step into your best friend's perspective and you look at yourself. When you treat yourself like your own best friend, 
you find solutions. You do find solutions how to get out of there, what to do to cheer somebody up. When you're dealing with your best friend, you would never let her down. You would never allow her to let herself go and stay stuck in the emotion. You would find a way to, de uh, to take her out, to cheer her up, to maybe just sit with her, acknowledge what is going on. Sometimes we don't need to fix things. Sometimes we literally just need to acknowledge them. The fixing comes later. Often the solutions come when we allow the emotion to show itself, to be seen, to be acknowledged, to then allow it to be healed. The last week I spent hours and hours decluttering my home. It was something that Rob and I wanted to do together and I couldn't believe that it took me over two and a half years to actually get to the point to finish something off that we wanted to start together. And it wasn't so much that it was so much work to do. It was that there were so many emotions attached to the work that needed to be done. And um, I want to share with you how I went through that. I come back to the analogy with the stuck elevator. You're standing in that stuck elevator and you're thinking through your options, hopefully. Some, you know, kick into panic. Others stand there and think through their options. Let's go with thinking through our options because I believe that's the healthier way to approach things. So there is the pressing buttons to go up and down and maybe that helps. And if nothing moves, what's the next step that you do? You call for help. There's the beautiful help button in each elevator. And on the other side, there's the voice that says, how can I help you? And all they need is, where are you and how can we help you? Who's with you? So they send a team in for help. This is the one thing that we are not really good at. When you think about it, there is this hesitation. Like even in a real life scenario, when you are stuck in an elevator, there's still this hesitation from people to actually press that help button. Is my situation bad enough to press that help button? Am I going to get into trouble if I press that help button and I could have saved myself from coming out of this situation? This is such a relevant example because the same thing happens with emotions. People tend to not push that help button. And the question is always, is my situation bad enough to ask for help? Which is actually quite sad when you think about it. Does your situation really have to be that bad to ask for help? Or is it okay to push that help button even before it gets that bad? I want you to go into observation mode with that again. Observe next time that happens. What is going on in your mind? And observe the moment when you go into judgment. Because that's what we do. We judge ourselves. I shouldn't be so needy. I should be getting through this by myself. I'm strong enough. I've done this before. I know what I'm doing. Uh, what will people think of me if I call for help? Will they think I'm weak? There is so much judgment going on. It's the same thing when you're stuck in an elevator. So in my situation, I was thinking the exact same things. What will people think of me when I allow them into my chaos? into my boxes full of dusty memories. I was fearing judgment. I felt very confronted by the thought of allowing people in. I have experienced judgment before about the state of my house and I did not like it. I always felt ex like explaining to people why my house had gotten to such a state. And then I just did it. I ask for help and Brooke in case you're watching this my beautiful beautiful highly professional decluttering lady she has been an absolute magical helper in my house the way she held space for me to make decisions that were really hugely emotional and the way she taught me to make these decisions by allowing myself to connect to the feelings that come up you know, the beautiful Marie Kondo approach. Does it spark joy? Yes or no? 
do I need to hold on to this memory? And really to give me that feeling that it was okay to hold on to this memory when I needed it. To make decisions, what could I do to honor this memory? Is it okay or enough to just take a picture or does it need something more? Does it need to be dusted off, polished, repaired maybe and put on a shelf? Does it need to be put in an album, in a frame and put on the wall? There were so many beautiful things that we did with memories of mine that were really important to me. So I went through this process highly supported. And I had my days where I knew that there were things that I had to do on my own. But I had the strength to do it because I knew I had backup. I knew I had support. I knew I had people on call that I could just literally call that very minute to come and sit with me, to be with me, to support me, to tell me that it's okay and that I can do it. I had people believing in me. And the most beautiful thing was when I was done, I had my cheerleader squad telling me what an amazing job I did. One lady in particular, Catherine, in case you're watching this, Catherine is one of those friends that everybody needs in their life. The one who's always organized, the one who's always got all the dates for school, um, things that are happening on hand, the one that sends you reminders when you forgot about a mufti day or something that's happening in your life, the one that organizes trips for us, the one that is organized. And on Saturday, I had a body shop party in my home. I had 13 girls in my house. And we had a really beautiful time of fun and connection, deep connections. I really loved having them. A lot of them I hadn't seen for a really long time. And I was so excited about that moment, not only to entertain for the first time in a long time, but there were so many layers for me, emotions that were stuck for a really long time that I had released. I had decluttered my home. And it was not just that. I realized that I was ready to entertain again. That was a really big thing for me. I was open to having that many people around me. And it made me feel light and happy. And I was fun again. And I just really didn't even notice till the next day. that I was like, wow, I hadn't been with many people for a really long time. I was avoiding crowds. I am not really that good with crowds anymore. Since Rob passed, I had really been avoiding them and I noticed that about me. And I honored that because I knew that's what I needed to avoid crowds. And all of a sudden I invited a crowd into my home without thinking about it. It only occurred to me the next day and I was so gobsmacked because it was the most beautiful sign for another huge layer of healing. I really felt the freedom that came with it. I was so proud of my efforts and I was so proud of my beautiful friend Catherine telling me, I can see the work that you've done. That I see you was so important to me that acknowledgement, somebody to be there to tell me how amazing that was, you know, because that is something I would have needed so badly to hear from Rob. And hearing that from more and more friends around me means the world to me. It really did. So when we think about stuck emotions, they cause claustrophobia, they hold you in a place where you don't belong anymore. They prevent you or hinder you from moving. And that's what emotions need to do. Emotions, energy in motion. Go into observation mode. Just sit with it for a moment once you watch this. Which emotions are stuck in your life right now that need to be seen, that need to be acknowledged, that need to be healed, that need to be freed. It was an incredible, incredible sense of freedom when I let them all go. 
And believe me, there were so many emotions that came up in this decluttering process. And that's why it took me so long. That's why there were 15 boxes underneath our staircase for so many years, untouched, not looked at, just collecting dust because I wasn't ready for the emotions that were freed with those boxes. And now they're all gone. <laughs> this morning I drove down the driveway and I was so happy to see that the whole pile of rubbish was gone because I ordered a council cleanup and we had bin day, so everything was gone. And I woke up to a house that felt light and free and warm and cozy like a home. My home is definitely not a display home, but I've got everything on display that makes me happy, that makes me feel warm and cozy, and that makes me feel like I'm treasuring those memories that mean the world to me. So go on. What emotions need to be seen, acknowledged and healed in your life? Please feel free to hit the subscribe button if, you get, if you're watching this on YouTube and share this with somebody who needs to hear this message right now. I am sending you bucket loads of love. Have an amazing week ahead. This is Maria Lissi signing off. Bye for now.